I didn't have a good opinion about Red RE0 or RE1 HD Remaster because in my mind, these games are so old that they are no longer fun to play and they are, you know, not as advanced as RE2 and RE3 remakes. So I was like so much into that remake sauce that like the graphics are better, you know, all of them are better. So because Fox was pushing for it so hard and I didn't want to spend money on like new games. So that's why I went to play Zero because I got Zero for free. And it led to a rabbit hole because Zero was a amazing and then it went to re1 hands down the greatest resident evil game and i had no clue because when i played this back in the 90s i quit the game during the part where the dogs arrived right and i was like done i couldn't my 9 10 year old brain couldn't handle it so in my mind re1 wasn't a good game because i thought that it was the most devolved version of all the resident evils in my head i thought like re2 3 4 5 6 improved on re1 re1 is more like a basic re and I was totally wrong. Resident Evil 1 is the equivalent of uncut cocaine. It's the most purest form of survival horror, item management, invisible timer, all of that good shit is in RE1. And I've never experienced a gameplay on the level of RE1 till this day, even after playing RE2 and RE3 Remake, right? This is the standard for every single survival horror game. And this is a masterpiece, straight up 10 out of 10. And I didn't know that because, you know, if I didn't try it, I would have not played it. Zaz is a lot of players don't approach RE0 and 1 because of the graphics. Yeah, you know, that was actually also my similar approach to it, right? Like, I thought like, hey man, since I've already experienced the remake, RE0 and 1 is gonna be like a serious downgrade. But I was so wrong. RE1 gameplay is still, still better than every other RE games out there, including the remakes. And you know what's the funny thing about 4? I used to think that 4 was the best, you know? Like, I played RE 2 and 3 when I was a kid. I never played RE 1 because I bitched out. But I played RE 4 when PlayStation 2 was on the come up and it was amazing because there was nothing like it. The over-the-shoulder camera, the graphics were really cutting edge, the enemy movements, like, say what you want, right? Like, the Ganados, as if, when we look back at, the, at it, is is not that impressive because we seen better but at the time for PS2 the animations were so realistic it was the first time like I experienced a zombie duck it was a really special game and I held RE4 as the higher standard for Resident Evil and I didn't know that I was totally wrong so by going back to RE0 because of Fox recommendation and eventually playing 1 1 is the ultimate quintessential Resident Evil game if you play Resident Evil 1 50 to 100 years in the future, it's still going to be a masterpiece. If you play RE4 50 to 100 years in the future, it's not going to age very well. That's why I say like RE1, at least for the HD remaster, is such a timeless masterpiece because it don't matter if you play this like the future. It's still so good. But I can't say that about every other Resident Evil game other than maybe uh 7. 7 was excellent. I would put like Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 7 on the Mount Rushmore of Resident Evils because you can play it at any year and it's still still the best it's still so good and then you play re4 it will always look like something have aged poorly trust me zard say re4 is still better than re2 remake i disagree and the reason why re2 remake is better than re4 is the simple reason that RE2 Remake is based on a game that is superior to 4. Just one gameplay mechanic tops RE2 Remake over 4, or even the OG RE2, Ink Ribbons. If you take away Ink Ribbons from a Resident Evil game, you are taking away essentially the soul away from what makes a game Resident Evil. So it doesn't matter if your game goes into the future and you have like a first person viewer like Resident Evil 7 where you play as the character where you are like the guy. As long as long as the game has ink ribbons and you feel the constant stress of not knowing when to save, your game will still have the heart and soul of Resident Evil. Resident Evil 4 is still a Resident Evil game, but they took away one of the key elements of it, like the ink ribbons. It still plays pretty much like every other Resident Evil game out there, except it doesn't. What is the key tenant to like Resident Evil? Being constantly stressed out about zombies and not having the feeling that you can take out all of them. So in Resident Evil 2 Remake, which I played on hardcore back in the day, I couldn't use my bullets on every single zombie. 
I had to learn how to like lure them to lunge and like run away. Because of that, I, I feel the constant stress. Even if I have to come back to the same room, I know there's like three more zombies. And I'm like, yo, I gotta deal with this shit again. I think like RE2 Remake or the OG for that fact, it forces you to hunker down and think about exactly what you're doing from a moment to moment basis, right? A lot of times when I play RE4, I think I'm playing it like more carelessly. I'm not as like precise and like measured as with like RE2. You wish 7 was third person. No, I think like 7 did a great job. I think it was important for 7 to go first person. And the simple reason why is because Resident Evil cannot exist within our gaming landscape if it doesn't keep up to gaming standards that we expect. As much as you argue like, hey man, I wish RE7 was third person. An even more OG player would argue that they wish RE7 has fixed camera. So how back do you want to go, right? And by adding a fixed camera or making it a third person, it would probably like alienate like newer fans. So what was really attractive about 7 was it was a completely new feeling Resident Evil. Even though all the core mechanics like the ink ribbons, the item management is all the same. It's still pretty much the same. You can juke the zombies. You have to save your ammo. You can't use them all all the time. You got to like conserve your ink ribbons. I would say 7 is a very important game and I I absolutely 100% support Capcom for going for it with the first person view. My argument is as much as they're going first person view with their future games, I would like them to occasionally release a third person uh, version. And to be fair, they are doing that, right? They are remaking RE4. So I think they will do that. Zara says, I'll say that because I appreciate the upgrade and inventory management of RE4. You got a point. RE4's item management system is very, very satisfying. But I think the item management gameplay Play in RE4 is more like a gut reaction to the fact that they are allowing the player to carry more items. So the item management like screen doesn't really matter unless the items are plentiful, right? So they, all of a sudden right now we have an item management game and that's because they give you a lot of bullets. They give you lots of weapons. So by them giving you this huge arsenal of weaponry, what are they taking away from the game? By giving you more bullets, it eliminates you having to learn how to juke zombies. And uh, I think like what replaces that form of gameplay is the item management game. And I think there's a better way they could have done that, right? Like if you look at the older RE games, like there's not much an, of an item management game because you know, there's the item box. So I guess that's why they removed the item box from this game because they want to make item management a thing. I think like item management was only a thing in a gut reaction to the fact that they're giving you more bullets. Zard says 7 can't be in third person because Ethan presentation would be strange. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of like moments that you experience as Ethan wouldn't be possible. For example, right? The moment where Mia chops off your hand and you block with your hand. When I encountered that scene, it felt like I was blocking with my real life hand. It was an experience I've never experienced with any prior Resident Evil games. Like in RE3 or 2 and 1, if that scene happened, I would be disassociated with it. I would just think like, oh, it's happening to Leon. It's not happening to me. And even certain aspects, right? When you would open up a door, when I am viewing it in first person, and I got to like peek through it, it almost feels like I'm there. And when you play like previous RE games, you're just, oh, it's Leon opening the door, not me. So I think like 7 being first person is a really good choice and they've proven that it works. What I would say is a lot of people do miss the third person gameplay, including myself. But to be really honest with you guys, I think we are a dying breed. We are a dying breed as much as like RPG lovers who like turn-based system combat are a dying breed. Because turn base combat it's fucking fun. It's so cool when your game is precisely tuned to the stats of the enemies and your you and what you do at every given moment matters compared with like a hack and slash kind of thing. But a lot of new gamers today who have never grown up with the games that we did would probably view turn base or third person RE game as trash because they don't understand it. We do. We understand the value of limited ink ribbons, third person gameplay, fixed camera. So I don't think like, you know, moving forward in the Resident Evil games uh, in the future, it's going to get better or it's going to get better in general because at the end of the day, I think Capcom is really focused on catering their games to as many people as possible. Like, so something as simple as RE4, a lot of people would say this is a casual game because it kind of is, right? A lot of times you settle your problems by killing the zombies, right? You don't like settle your problems by sneaking through, powering through. And 
here's the thing that I have the problem with games, right? Let me let me explain this. Games from back in the day were harder and more challenging and more exciting because what you do from the beginning all the way till the end matters. And if you are careless and you fuck up anything from the beginning, like you use up all your bullets, you didn't save up enough health items or you spent your ink ribbons like crazy, you might not even finish the game. You have to restart it. And that even goes for RPGs like Final Fantasy. Like when you start Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9 back in the day, you got to start it out with the intention that it's going to be a long game and you got to think the long game and you got to play the long game. So if you fuck up, you use all your potions, your Phoenix downs, you never level up your materia, you don't like look for the secret characters and stuff like that. Eventually, when you go to this two or this three, the game is going to fuck you up. The game isn't playing around and that's the same with Resident Evil. And I don't think that's going to be a thing anymore because now developers are trying to make their game more accessible to people so what you do from the start isn't going to be as important because they don't want you to struggle so much that's why games from back in the day are always going to be like secret masterpieces because you're never going to experience the same thing the only few companies that are still doing it are companies like from software that's why they didn't compromise with Sekiro it's still fucking hard if you don't focus well from the start you don't manage your shit you don't level up yeah guess what's going to happen you're going to get your shit kicked in that's why journalists are completely complaining about the games because they pussy. Zara says, yes, Ethan is a civilian like us. So first person is better. If the character is Leon or Chris, then third person. I would say like Ethan now has kind of like become like a Leon or Chris, right? Because why are Leon and Chris like so popular? It's not so much about that they have a character design or they have a costume, right? It's not so much about that. It's because you have memories playing as them during a game, right? Like every time I think about Leon, I'm going to think about his actual accolades of what he accomplished in RE2. He got away from the police station. You know, he rescued the president's daughter. That's what I think about Leon. When I think about Chris, I'll think about Chris as the guy who was in the original mansion, right? And he also took part in like the Africa zombie incident in RE5. And you know, that's how I remember him. When we think of Ethan, we are going to associate Ethan with RE7. Ethan right now is also equally a legendary Resident Evil protagonist, just like Chris and Leon. The only difference is most of us haven't seen his face. If you want to go look at Ethan's face, you got to go online and you got to find like the hackers who hacked through the game to see actually how he looks like. So I would say like Ethan is not so much of a civilian anymore. Ethan is probably on par with Chris and Leon because think about like the entire Baker family he eliminated. Those guys were not like fucking walk in the park, right? And essentially we still associate Ethan with this because we are the one who defeated the enemies. But if you're looking at a character overall, like Ethan is right now pretty pretty legendary. It would be actually really cool if you see like in the future there's a crossover between Ethan and Leon and Chris. It'd be pretty sick. On my tier list, Resident Evil 1 is the greatest Resident Evil game of all time, right? And then Resident Evil 7 is the second greatest Resident Evil game. And then it's followed up by 2-0- three and then only four. It's so sad that I'm actually putting like Resident Evil 4 at the back because it used to be my first greatest. Oh man, this is the greatest one. Yeah. And I haven't even played like five, six and Revelation. So we got to revisit this tier list, but yeah. If you enjoy my content, make sure you comment, like, subscribe, all that jazz. Check out my Twitch on Oats Curry TV and I'll catch you guys in the next video.